I thought I'd try something a little different for this video. Because I have done coding throughout my life, I thought it'd be interesting to go back and look at a program that I wrote when I was very young and that wasn't that good and then try and write it properly and show you the mistakes that I made and maybe how it could have been improved. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try and rewrite it and make it into a game that you might actually want to play. So I know I'm going to talk about basic coding here and you may not know how to program. Don't worry about that. The code that I'm going to do here is not that difficult. I mean, I wrote it when I was 11 and I just learned to program. So there's nothing really complicated in here. You should be able to follow along fairly easily. So for many, many years, I was a programmer. I haven't programmed for, for a while now. But when I originally started coding, I got my start on something called the Sinclair ZX80, which was made in 1980. This was a very, very basic computer. It makes something like the ZX Spectrum look positively advanced. It only had 1K of RAM and it only had 4K of ROM. That's to put all the basic in. 4K is a minuscule amount of space to try and write a basic interpreter, something that's going to allow you to create basic code and also run the screen and do all this sort of stuff. So it's amazing they could even do this, but they did and they did a great job doing it, but there's a lot of compromises and I'll maybe show you those in a second. So I found this computer one day at the back of a dusty cupboard because my parents had abandoned it. They thought it would be a good idea to learn about computers. They didn't find it very interesting, but I dug it out. I started programming on it and I found it a lot of fun. I wrote a couple of programs and I was buying computer magazines and I thought it'd be interesting maybe to try and submit some of these programs to the magazine. I mean, what have I got to lose? Just a stamp and some paper. So I submitted this program, it was a golf game, and it actually got accepted. I'm very surprised it was accepted because it really is awful. It's a terrible game, it's, it's not very interesting to play, it's got a bug in it, it's, anyway, it's, it's not very good, but you know, I was 11 and I think maybe at this time the ZX81 and even the Spectrum were already out. This was autumn 1982, but the magazine which I submitted it to, ZX Computing, I think had a bit of a mandate that they wanted to have programs from all the different ZX computers and maybe no one was submitting anything for the ZX80 that month. So they thought, okay, well, let's just put this in, but at least we've got something. So I got the princely sum of £10 for my game. I was very, very happy about that. That was, that was a mountain of money for the time and I got my name in lights. It was fantastic to see. So I wrote the game in 1K. I only had a 1K machine, so it wasn't going to be anything bigger than that. And I could do a demo on the real ZX80. I have a ZX80 still. I have a TV that can display it, but the problem is, is that the ZX80 is a bit flaky. It doesn't display things very well, but the main problem is, is typing things on the touch sensitive keyboard is very slow and really not fun. And I've got to type in this original game, then I've got to type in the improved version. Plus I've got to load and save games, which is a whole thing with a cassette recorder, which I'm not going to go into. So I'm going to use an emulator, it's way simpler. So I thought I'd give you a quick demonstration of the game. So here's the listing for the game. So we'll type run and play. So first of all, you are on hole one. The ball is behind a tree. So for every hole, you have nine holes because at the time I thought maybe there were only nine holes in the game. Maybe I just didn't want to subject people to 18 times of doing this. On hole one, the ball is behind a tree. So on each of the nine holes, it tells you what you did with your first shot. And you're only allowed one shot on each hole because Again, it's a terrible game. It doesn't work very well. So the ball is behind a tree and then you press enter or new line and you're onto hole two. The ball is behind a tree again and so you didn't do very well. Again, hole three, the ball is in the hole. You got a hole in one on the third hole, so well done. F hole four, the ball is on the green. On hole five, the ball is on top of a tree. I came up with lots of funny things to say here. Hole six, the ball is in the rough. Uh, hole seven, the ball is in the rough. And you keep going like this. 
until you finished all nine holes and then at the end of it it says you finished you have nine points not quite sure how we got nine points. Actually, I am sure how we got nine points, but we'll see that at the end because I did some really terrible shots at the start. So how come I've only got nine points? Well, we'll see why in a second, and it's because of a bug. Anyway, it gives you a little pithy comment, see you at Glen Eagles, and then it asks you if you want to play again. If you type Y, then you can play again, but uh, apparently no. If you type Y-E-S, you get to go again. And that's another problem with the program. It's not clear what you should do. So anyway, so that's the original program. So I thought what I'd do is I'd put both the original program and the updated program up on the screen so you can see the differences. First of all, the first five lines are the same. You're printing golf and just printing five spaces, this thing here for I is one to five, print and then next I, that's just looping around five times and printing a return character five times. Then it gets a little different because the original problem with the program, which is why you got this see you at Glen Eagles, even though you did really terribly, is that I don't ever keep a score. This is the original version of the code. I don't ever keep a score of what happens. So what I do is I take the result of the ninth hole, I multiply it by nine here on this line 280, and then I say you, and then you just tell you what the score is. So again, that's completely wrong. So what I've done with the new program is I actually keep score. What a crazy idea. And I've created a variable which is a more meaningful name. So I've called it score rather than um, D or whatever it was before. Then instead of originally we had this K variable which was keeping a tab of the all the different holes that you're on and then it would keep going back to 80 and looping around and adding one to K. So K is zero, then make K one, and then you go all the way down to here, then you go back to 80, and then you make K is two, and then you're on hole two. So instead of calling hole K, I've called it H. I would make this um, hole for hole is one to nine, but in a four next loop in ZX80 basic, you can only have one letter variable names. <laughs> so again, this is a very basic version of basic. So I thought I'd use H, so it's a little more clear than something else. This line here, all this is doing is saying, loop around, start with one, finish on nine. When you finish with nine, then finish. And it's called a four next loop. So this is the first line here, four and it finishes here with next. So next H loops back to this H. So that's all you need to do. It just goes around from one to nine and this variable H is holding values one to nine. So then it's kind of the same thing. You're on hole and it tells you what hole you're on. Then again, you're creating this shot variable, which is a random value from one to five. It prints what the where the ball is, and again, the lines 120 to 160 are pretty much the same as those lines 120 to 160. I couldn't make this really any better in ZX80 Basic. What I would do in a better form of Basic or a better programming language is to put all of these strings, all these uh, parts of text here, into a big data array or a big array of strings. And then I would just put something like um, print array brackets shot. And so all those five lines could be reduced to just that one line of print array brackets shot, and then it would just print the, the right thing. But ZX80 Basic doesn't allow string array, so I've had to do it this way. So this is basically the same way I did it before. But line 170 is very different. So here you've got 170 if z is 1 then let s equal 1, if z equals 2 then let s equal 2. This is a very wasteful way of doing this. It's much better to essentially say then let s equal z. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have those five lines. But then I don't even need to do that because if you've noticed there is no variable s and that's because you're creating the variable right now and then you're, you're then going to use this to multiply by 9 at the end. I suppose Maybe I was going to do some sort of cumulative score at one point, but anyway, this is this is not very good code, obviously. Again, I'm very young, not very good code. But what we're doing here on line 170 
is just we're adding the shot value to the score and then keeping a cumulative score here. Line 220, if we can, uh, I can, I can actually line these up. So you can see now line 220, they're basically the same and you're just waiting for someone to actually input something. The reason why I do this is because you, you have to put some sort of weight into the program because if you're not waiting for the user to do something in ZX80 Basic, then the screen is blank because it's either updating the screen or it's updating something that you're doing. And so things like arcade games are just not possible <laughs> on the ZX80 because you can't be waiting for people to press keys while things are happening on the screen. You either have to be waiting for something to happen or you have to be displaying something. So it's, um, it, it's, a very, it's a very basic version of BASIC, which is why the ZX81 came out and was, was so much better, and then the Spectrum came out and was even better than that. Anyway, so we're waiting for something. If you press S, then you stop, because I thought it'd be a good idea to maybe um, stop halfway through the program, but I don't tell anyone that. So again, that's, that's maybe a bit of a deficiency with the program. And then CLS is clear screen. And then we do the next H, which goes back to here, and we do that nine times, and then we finish, because we don't have this go to 80, and then if K equals nine, then what I'm doing with this K equals nine, I'm getting out of this loop. It's the same thing as this, but this is a much more elegant way. This four next loop is a much more elegant way of doing it. So finally, you have finished with a score of whatever the score is, and that's sort of a merging of these three lines here which is trying to show you a finished and then what your score is. And then the same thing, it displays the score and it displays something pithy to tell you what's happened and then asks you if you want to play again. This time I've actually put Y slash N so you know what to type in rather than guessing what you need to do. And then finally, you don't need the stop line at the end. So as you can see, it's a more compact program. It's more elegant, but there's very little you can do in ZX80 Basic to try and make it more of an elegant program. But I thought I would challenge myself to try and make something in the same style as this. So a golf game, nine holes, that would have maybe a bit of skill and would play more like a real game of golf, at least the mechanics of it, and also try and make it run on an original ZX80. So this doesn't fit into 1K, but it does a lot more and it's a much more compelling game than the original, although that's not a hard thing. So this is the updated version of the program, which I've called Golf 2024. And as you can see, it says you're on hole one, it's a par two, it's 173 yards to the pin and it's your first shot. So then it asks you which club you want to use and you can pick either a driver, one of the nine irons that you've got, or a putter. I, didn't, I thought of putting uh, sand wedges and things like that in, but it was getting too complicated. So you can type in, let's say, one iron, if you want to have a one iron. It asks you what power you want to use from one to 10, so let's say eight. And so it now says you're 12 yards from the pin and it's your second shot. So now it's a good idea to pick a putter and you pick the power you want to use. Let's do three. And the ball is in the hole in two shots. Press new line, which is enter. Then it goes on to the second hole. And as you can see at the top, instead of showing the title, it's now giving you a scorecard. So the first hole, it was a par two. You got two. The second hole, it's a par four. And it's 378 yards to the pin. So let's pick a driver and let's go full whack with a power 10. I thought of doing something where if you put power 10, then maybe there's a more chance, more of a chance you would slice it or cause a problem. But again, that was too complicated, so I didn't do that. So now shot two, and let's pick an eight iron, and let's do power eight. And then as you can see, it takes a while for it to work out what's going on, 73 yards to the pin. So again, you can see, I'll, I'll fast forward through this, but the idea is you see, you can, you can have more of an interesting game here. So let's do a nine iron, uh, power six, ball is in the hole, three shots. Hey, we, are, we got a birdie.
So once you've finished all nine holes, it again, I thought it'd be nice if it uh, gave you a little bit of a pithy answer at the end. So it says, see, see you at Glen Eagles, but it says the game's complete. You took 24 shots. You were two shots under par and, and see you at Glen Eagles. So uh, hopefully that's a little bit of a more interesting program. It was quite complicated to get that to work on a ZX80 because of the very limited basic that it had. It I had to do some very convoluted tricks to get it to work, but it was a lot of fun. And if you're interested to watch a video of me going through all the code and describing what I did, then I'll put a link in the description. It's very long and if you're not into coding, it'll be pretty boring. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun for me to go back and look at my old code and fix it and also to challenge myself to write something a little bit better given the fact with the ZX80 you can do very, very little. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.